Hello everybody and welcome to the Decks of the Weekend today on Tuesday because yesterday I was in Ghent for the European Regional Championship where my very good friend Marco Del Pivo won the whole thing, 950 players competing for 24 slots for the Pro Tour where he was already qualified because he topped it at the last Pro Tour but he came there with the goal of uh, making the final for the World slot invite and he got there winning the whole thing that's insane that's amazing i'm so happy for him uh pivo has been a very good friend of mine for the past five six seven years where he kind of like you know came back to magic and uh yeah basically very lives uh, very close to me and we were able to travel to a lot of events together test for a lot of events together and uh super happy for him to see uh, hosting that trophy in um, in Ghent yesterday. The deck he played is, of course, my uh, deck of the weekend for Modern, and he played um, Timur Rhinus. Um, again, this is the deck that he top hated the PT Barcelona with as well, so it was obviously a, a romantic choice of his. Unfortunately, my romantic choice, Blur and Merc, that didn't quite pan out as the deck is, as I expected, not too good and uh, didn't have a great conversion rate. Uh, in fact, the best decks at the event were, as expected, Yogmoth, Timur Rhinos, and uh, Amulet Titan. There was three Yogmoth and two Rhinos in the top eight, um, which is kind of crazy to think that Yogmoth did so well because of the pretty poor matchup against Timur Rhinos. So definitely Rhinos is there to keep in check Yogmoth to not dominate the format. I mean, the Titan also a great deck, also a very good performance. No top eights, but definitely so many decks in the day two were Amulet Titan. There's definitely uh, every near every table had an Amulet. Uh, sorry, near every other table had an Amulet Titan. It was a, uh, it was a lot. But anyway, uh, this is the list. He, as we speak, I believe he's tweeting about his uh, article that he wrote on the play next to me. Was, uh, really wanted to share everything with the um, listeners and I believe that uh, this exact list also won the challenge by uh, one of the uh, Carney's Patreon uh, where you know people is uh, there as well so um, yeah I mean if you want to learn uh, this deck if you want to get better at this deck definitely check out what Pivo has to say I recorded a video with this deck this morning so this is definitely a probably the best version of Rhinos at the moment things may change for the uh, next RC for your RC if you're watching this and you're playing the American RC or the Canadian and so on I would definitely replace catch your Trium with the new bounce with a new scry land but uh, sorry, surveillance and maybe some other uh, differences that he points out in his article. But overall, this list was perfect for the last weekend. Him and uh, uh, his teammate Makuto um, went 10 and 0 in the mirror match, which is insane. Makuto went, I believe, 40 place, so very close to that invite as well. Uh, they were on the same list. And uh, outside of that, I think that this is probably going to be the first. Uh, the best deck in modern for me for my power rankings that, that I have to make tomorrow for Shine of Fireball. Definitely stay tuned there. But this weekend again definitely told you that, uh, well, there's a pretty large gap between uh, the decks at the moment in modern. There's the best deck, Rhinos, Yogamoth, Amulet, and I would say also Living End. And then there's the other decks, the romantic choices, as I like to call them, the one that you play because you love them, uh, because you've spent so much time uh, improving them that you don't feel like leaving them. Also, maybe scared of picking up a new deck, which comes with costs and also uh, new mistakes. Even Team Rhinos, a simple deck as Team Rhinos, can obviously have a lot of choices. Uh, for example, the matchup Rhinos against Merc that it is not easy at all. And you would say that it loses to Merc Tide, but you know, if you look at the stats, I think it wasn't that bad, and people definitely did not lose to Merc Tide this weekend. So, yeah, Modern is very skill intensive at the moment, and the best decks are better than the rest. So, you know, take these informations as you want, and uh, stay tuned for more uh, Modern content on this channel, of course. Uh, let's talk about other formats as well, because my deck of the weekend usually features three formats, and the second format is usually Legacy. Uh, in Legacy, the, I was very in doubt whether to choose this one or the Timur Delver deck that won the um, the qualifier that was in Ghent for the European um, 
uh, legacy uh, championship but at the end i chose this mono black which the same player grim he um or they uh top hated back to back challenges maybe even better than that in the same weekend with this mono black deck so stalacti stalker is a card that i've been highlighting I'm not a fan of this card. I think just seeing this as an Izamaru that can grow with a fetch land isn't amazing. Especially since on turn one you'd rather do other unfair things like turn one Grave Reanimate or turn one Thoughtseize, which isn't unfair, but like keeps in check the unfair decks. So you kind of left over with this card for the later games. But despite my dislike for the Selective Soccer, the rest of the cards are very powerful. You have Shield, Red Opposition Agent, Dothy, Orcish, Bowmaster. You're playing 14 lands, but you have three trolls. Uh, Black really has it all. It went from being one of the worst uh, color um, to being one of the best in Legacy after, of course, Blue. Uh, so this is something to work on, and I believe that uh, Mono Black definitely has the power uh, to be just a Mono Black fair deck in, in Legacy these days. Because sure, you have Grief Reanimate, but this is not even... Uh, comparable to the other unfair things that you can do in Legacy. So if you're afraid of this combo in Modern, well, don't be, because the Arachnus Cam deck isn't that good in Modern, but outside of that, um, it, it, this isn't the same in Legacy. All right, let's go over to Pioneer, which is the format that I have to focus starting from today because I have the Pro Tour. In just two weeks, I'm gonna go to Chicago to do some testing with my team. And I definitely have to look at the new cards because those will impact a lot uh, the new format. And um, in particular, there was this new deck that popped up out of nowhere, I have to say, and did very well this weekend with, I believe, one win and two top four between the challenges. And um, it's a blue, red, and soul deck, but it has a lot of strange things going on. It plays a card that I actually didn't know before, Combat Courier, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one that you can suck to draw a card and you can unearth for one, so uh, you can then like sacrifice uh, this uh, unearth body to Shrapnel Blast or Torch the Tower. You can also use Inti as a way to get card advantage with the Smuggler's Copter. You have Spyglass Siren, which is basically a Thraven Inspector in combination with Gleeful Sabotage Demolition. And then you have the Gleeful Demolition plus Reckless Bushwalker that the other deck tries to do. The Boris Convoke. So basically, this is a deck with a little bit sim very similar to Boris Convoke, but you have uh, the the final reach with Shrapnel Blast going to the face. Um, in Cyber, you have Four Spell Pierce, which is obviously a great card in compare um, in combination with Rampaging Ferocity for the Amalia deck, Azeroth for the Rakdos deck, and so on and so forth. So yeah, a very cool deck. Oh, I haven't mentioned the Dark Citadel and Soul Artifact to turn your land into a five-five indestructible card. Mm, but yeah, so this is a very aggressive deck that um, I really didn't expect, took me off surprise, probably also extremely cheap to build in paper, not that you have that many Pioneer events in paper, but maybe your area does, but yeah, also cheap online, I guess, if you want to play the empty your challenges and you're good at them, they're definitely good value. Uh, that's going to be it for my um, decks of the weekend. But first, before leaving you, I wanted to uh, tell you about all about the uh, Mangus Workshop. I'm sure I, you already heard about this news from me, but we have a new video on Mangus Workshop and uh, it is uh, doing very well. It's just 12, 21 hours ago and it has 6,000 views. I am super excited for this. It is a pauper deck between Cogates and Black, and Black Green Gardens. It lasts about an hour, uh, which as you can imagine, it took a long time to edit. You have the cards on the corner, you have the cards highlighting here, and you also have the subtitles. And uh, yeah, check it out. I am super excited about it. I think that uh, this will definitely be one of my most proud project in 2024. Um, yeah, I'm actually, after this video, I'm gonna go to the office. We're gonna uh, plan on the next recording and I am so, so excited to be back at work and for what I do. So if you enjoy what I do, please uh, support with uh, you know following, liking, commenting, and so on and so forth. And yeah, have a great week and thank you for watching.